This is a lecture of Pharmaceutics to students. The code of this course is PT404. Here I am. I'm Professor Dr. Mona Awalanin, and these are our office hours, my office hours, and where my office is. And this is my email. If you have any question, please email me and you'll get your answer soon. These are reference textbooks and recommended ones of our course. Let's start our lecture. Yal. Last lecture, we were discussing how to design a cream, which is formulation of a cream. We knew how to choose the type of cream, how to choose the oil phase, and we start discussing how to choose the emulsifying agent. In choosing the emulsifying agent, to choose a suitable emulsifier, we said that you should follow these three steps. First, define the cream type, then calculate the required HLB, then choose the emulsifier among many different emulsifiers. The step that matter is how to choose an emulsifier among different emulsifiers. In our example, in our previous example, in last lecture, we were restricted to only three emulsifiers. Now, if the group, for example, that has a simple home, we have three emulsifiers, we choose one them. But in real life, there are many and many different emulsifiers. You should pick the suitable one. To choose a suitable fire, you have to know types of emulsifying agents. There are two main types of emulsifying agents. Surfactants, or surface active agents that are of hydrophilic uh, head and lipophilic tail and so, 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 and miscellaneous. Miscellaneous emulsifying agents do not have this unique structure of surfactants, but they have emulsifying properties. Surfactants are further classified into anionic, cationic, amphoteric, and non-ionic surfactants. All of them have the unique structure of hydrophilic head and lipophilic tail, but they differ in the charge on the molecule. Anionic surfactants have negative charge on the hydrophilic part of the molecule. Cationic ones has positive charge on the hydrophilic part of the molecule. Amphoteric have both charges, positive charge and negative charge. For example, if a molecule has carboxylic group carrying negative charge and amino group carrying positive charge, this molecule is amphoteric. In acidic pH, it will show its anionic uh, properties and vice versa. In alkaline pH, it will show its uh, cationic properties. So, the nature of the amphoteric uh, emulsifier uh, depends on the pH of the medium. It may act as anionic or as cationic to emulsifier according to the pH of the medium. This pH will expose which group, the positive one or the negative one in the amphoteric molecule. And finally, we have the non-ionic surfactants which carry no group, no charge. Anionic emulsifying agents are very confusing. To avoid confusion, remember that these are salts of Acids, salts of sodium, potassium, there are monovalent, calcium, which are divalent, and triethanolamine, which are organic salt. So, acid part of an ionic emulsifier may be oleate, stearate, or lauryl sulfate. So, you have sodium oleate sodium stearate, 
sodium lauryl sulfate, all of them are anionic emulsifying agent. Now, what type of, of emulsion, emulsion is given by these emulsifying agents? Sodium oleate may give water in oil emulsion, but generally, all sodium salts as sodium oleate, sodium stearate, and sodium lauryl sulfate give oil in water emulsion. This is for sodium salts. What about potassium? Sodium, شبك في الأوليت والستيريت واللورايل سلفيت. Potassium, هيشبك بس في الأوليت والستيريت. We have potassium oleit and potassium stearit and both give oil and water emulsion. Calcium, we have only calcium oleit as an anionic emulsifier and it gives oil and water emulsion. Triethanolamine, we have triethanolamine stearate and triethanolamine lauryl sulfate, and both can give oil in water emulsion. These are anionic emulsifying agents. Ethyl ether, this is a good revision on what we said before. Polyoxyethylene ethyl ether is also called macrogol. Example of these macrogols, the plural as because they also have different molecular weights. Chromophore and bridge are examples of macrogols or polyoxyethylene alkyl ethers. As we said, polyoxyethylene fatty acid derivatives of sorbitan esters and polyoxyethylene alkyl ether both can give water in oil or oil in water emulsions. Another type of emulsifying agents is the miscellaneous emulsifying agents, not surfactants. As we said, their chemical structure is not as surfactants. For example, beeswax, white or yellow beeswax, Wool fat, which is also called lanolin, wool alcohol, which is also called lanolin alcohol, they all give water in oil emulsion. Other examples are emulsifying waxes. Emulsifying waxes can be prepared from the reaction between C2 sterile alcohol and an emulsifier. If C2 sterile alcohol is reacted with sodium lauryl sulfate, this will produce an ionic emulsifying wax. And if it is reacted with cetomicrogol, it will produce non-ionic emulsifying wax. And both emulsifying waxes give oil in water emulsion. الحاجات دي محتاجة حفظ؟ آه للأسف بس أتمنى إنه طريقة العرض so now we know how to choose the emulsifying agent. We have only one step to design our cream. We have to study how to choose the additive. Choice of additives. Additives used in creams are used either to give their action in aqueous phase or in oily phase. Additives act in aqueous phase are co-solvent, humectants, preservatives, and buffers. Additives which give their action in oily phase, there is only one additive, antioxidant. Co-solvent is used to increase the solubility of the drug in the vehicle. It's used to keep drug solubility. Never prepare a cream with saturated solution of the drug or concentration of the solution near saturation. Why? Because on storage, some water may be vaporized. So the available water to dissolve the drug will decrease and the drug may precipitate. 
I need to keep the drug in solution form. The drug will not be effective except it is in solution form. So I have to add a co-solvent to keep drug solubility even after vaporization of some water content of the cream. I have to keep the drug in the soluble form to increase its efficiency and to prevent crystallization of the drug. When the drug precipitates, it precipitates as crystals, which may scratch the skin, the sharpish skin. وبالتالي أنا يهمني جدا إن الدرج يفضل في الصوليبل فورم في الكريم بتاعي. To keep the drug in soluble form, first we add co-solvents. Example of co-solvents: glycerin, propylene glycol, and ethanol. All these keep drug solubility even after water vaporization. Another additive is humectant, and also humectant is used to decrease water evaporation, and so keep drug solubility in my cream. Humectants um, are used in concentrations not exceeding 5%. Never add a humectant in a concentration exceeding 5%. Why? As we said before, فكرين وإحنا بنتكلم في السكين على how to keep skin hydrated, how to avoid skin drying, we said that humectants are very eager for water. They combine with water and keep it in the skin. Because humectants are very eager for water, if they are used in concentration exceeding 5%, they will pull water from deeper layers of the skin and skin drying will occur. So when you use a humectant, use it in a concentration less than 5%. So it adds by keeping the skin hydrated, keeping water within the skin, keeping water within your cream and prevent cream drying. But if the concentration of the humectant exceeds 5%, when the cream is applied to the skin, humectant will pull water from the skin and leave the skin dry. Example of humectant is glycerin, propylene glycol, sorbitol, and urea. And please take care. Glycerin and propylene glycol can be used as co-solvents and can be used as humectants. If you have a prescription, prescription of a cream containing glycerin or propylene glycol, and I ask you, what is the rule of glycerin in this prescription? You should think well. If the drug is known to be highly soluble, so for sure glycerin is not used as a co-solvent. It's added to the prescription to exert humectant effect. مش تشوف جلسرين على طول تقول كوسولفنت قد ايه يومكتن لو الدرج بتاعك ده يبقى اصلا والسوليبريتي بتاعته عاليه جدا احط له كوسولفنت ليه؟ احط له يومكتن فجلسرين بيشتغل هنا في الحاله دي از ا يومكتن. بريزرفاتيفز اللي هم انتي مايكروبيال ايجنتس Efficient preservative is effective against many bacterial species, of course. Efficient preservative is preferred to be bactericidal rather than bacteriostatic. Bactericidal يعني bacterial killer. Bacteriostatic يعني bacteria attenuator. Bactericidal يعني بيقتل البكتيريا. Bacteria. Bacteriostatic يعني بيضعف البكتيريا ويوقف شغلها. So bactericidal preservatives are more preferred than bacteriostatic one. طيب لو أنا هحط preservative do you think I choose a preservative with high oil and water protection coefficient 
or low oil and water partition coefficient. Remember, oil and water partition coefficient means the ratio between solubility of substance in oil to its solubility in water. Yani substance of high oil and water partition coefficient means it's very soluble in oil and poorly soluble in water. And vice versa, substance with low oil and water partition coefficient means it's with low solubility in oil and high solubility in water. Do you think my preservative should have high, preserv high solubility in oil and low solubility in water? Or low solubility in oil and high solubility in water? It should be with high or low oil and water partition coefficient. To think about it, think. Why do we need preservative to prevent microbial growth? Okay, microbial growth is expected to take place in aqueous phase or oil phase. There is no microbial growth in oil phase. Microbial growth only takes place in aqueous phase. So the preservative should pre present in aqueous phase. Let it be good for aqueous phase. So its solubility in water should be very high and its solubility in oil should be very small. Substance with small solubility in oil and high solubility of water are said to be with low oil in water partition coefficient. So the use preservative should be of low oil in water partition coefficient to assure عشان أتأكد that it is found in the aqueous phase to fight bacterial growth or to prevent bacterial growth. Examples of preservatives are methyl paraben, propyl paraben, and benzoic acid. So, in the aqueous, may add buffers. And please notice, buffers are only used in case of oil in water creams and not used in case of water in oil creams. I use buffer when the water is the external phase. When oil is the external phase, there is no effect of hydrogen ion concentration. There is no effect of pH because hydrogen will not ionized in oil phase. Buffers are used only for oil uh, and water creams. Buffers are used to adjust the pH of the cream between 4 and 7 and the optimum value is 5.5. Take care that the, this buffer does not deactivate the emulsifier. If you use amphoteric emulsifier, uh, we said that the efficiency of the emulsifier depends on the pH. So please uh, take care that the buffer do not deactivate the emulsifier. So how to take care about it? If the buffer, what, what, what should I do if the buffer, if I find that the buffer deactivates the emulsifier? Should I replace the buffer with another one? Of course not. You replace the buffer with another one with the optimum pH 5.5 and this will also deactivate the emulsifier. You should replace the emulsifier with another one that is not affected by pH, which is optimum for creams. Uh, and finally, antioxidants. As we said, antioxidants are used in the oil phase or their ex exert their action in oil phase because oxidation of oils result in rancidity. يعني الأويل لو حصل له oxidation تلاقيه يزنق. The chemical structure بتاعه يتغير ويبقى of bad odor. So antioxidants are designed to give their action in the oil phase. Efficient antioxidant is compatible with other ingredients, of course. And what about its oil and water partition coefficient? Do you think I should 
choose an antioxidant with high oil and water partition coefficient of low oil and water partition coefficient. Again, the antioxidant should exert its action in the oil phase, so it should be soluble in the oil phase, so it should be of high oil and water partition coefficient. Take care that your antioxidant is not taken inside the micelles and not absorbed onto the container or the closure of your cream. Examples of antioxidants, butyl hydroxytoluene, BT, BHT, butyl hydroxy anisole, BHA, and alpha tocopherol. طيب, should we memorize the name of these examples? هنحفظ الexamples دي? Yes. You may have in the exam, you may have a prescription, and I may ask you, about the rule of one or more of its ingredients. If you find butyl hydroxytoluene in the prescription, you should know that this is an antioxidant. Now we know the definition of creams, types of creams, and formulation of creams. It's time to discuss how to prepare creams. Actually, before discussing how to prepare creams, we should know the general precautions in semi-solid preparation, in any semi-solid preparation. And then we can discuss general method of preparation of creams. General precautions in preparation of any semi-solid dosage form. Hygiene is extremely important. Some students may think mm -hmm, these semi-solids will be applied to the skin. They will not be injected. Uh, so, um, hygiene is not so important. No, hygiene is very important in preparing semi-solid dosage forms. Why? When you apply any substance on an intact skin, on a healthy skin, there is no fear of infection because it's healthy skin and skin is a good barrier, as we said before. But we use semi-solid preparations on diseased skin. على skin عيان مقطوع متخربش في مشكلة في disorder. So if you not follow hygiene in preparing semi-solid preparations, infections may happen to the patient. عشان أنا بستخدم ال preparations بتاعتي على skin مش في كامل صحته وبالتالي مش هيدي ال complete protection effect بتاعه. So لازم ال preparation بتاعتي تبقى hygiene. لازم تبقى clean. لازم تبقى نظيفة. Microbes. In hygienic measures, how to clean equipment? Equipment used in preparation of creams, either on the small scale in the lab or large scale in the uh, factory, we have to clean equipments using hot water, then alcohol. Then leave the equipment till alcohol. Traces vaporize. Okay. أغسل أول بغوت ووتر وانا نغسلها بالكل وانا نسبها لغاية بقايا الالكل ما تطير. طب what water to be incorporated? لو أنا أحط ووتر أنا أحط ووتر في الكريم. الهيجينيك ووتر ده شكله إيه؟ sterile water? No. Just use distilled water. Always make an excess. Into a cattle creams for family, and in practical lessons, you calculate it for 25 excess in the cream. The uh, excess amount to be prepared in the cream is not stated in textbooks. This 25% is not stated in textbook. Textbooks say calculate for an excess, and they didn't define the excess. We in Cairo University, defined the excess to be 
20%, 25% as you do in the practical labs. Why we need a excess, an excess in preparing semi-solid preparations? Because they are viscous preparations. I may not able to transfer all the prepared dosage form to the packaging material. Now, Dr. Ali Haddar Midgram, if you prepare just 100 grams as prescribed, when packing in them, some of them are still in the dish and the total weight you give to patient is less than the prescribed weight, which is 100 grams. عشان كده بنحضر اكسس بحط له من الاكسس ده ال 100 جرام اللي هي prescribed to avoid loss of the dosage form due to its high viscosity. Packaging of semi solids they are packed in ointment jar or in collapsible tubes. Semi-solid dosage forms are formed of drug incorporated in a base. So, there are general terms used to express the method used to incorporate a drug in a base. These general terms are trituration and levigation. Trituration and levigation are terms expressing how do I mix the drug with the base. Levigation and trituration. Trituration means to mix, just mixing. It's used for fine insoluble solids or liquids. To mix these substances with the base, this process is called trituration. But sometimes the insoluble solid prescribed in the cream is not fine. It's not a fine powder. It's coarse particles. So I have to grind it first to make it fine, then triturate it with the base. Yes, or may you may use an easier process, which is levigation. Levigation means to wet grind. Just add the coarse insoluble solid with some of the base and grind it in presence of the base. This is called wet grinding or levigation. We know the difference between trituration and levigation. Trituration is used for fine insoluble solids, but levigation is used for coarse insoluble ones. Here we come to the general method of preparation of creams. As you do in the lab, creams is a dark incorporated in a base. So first prepare the base, then find the suitable method to incorporate the drug in this base. Action of a cream base. First, prepare the aqueous phase. Aqueous phase is water. So, in water, dissolve water-soluble solids, add water-miscible liquids, and warm to 70 degrees. Now, you prepared the aqueous phase and prepare the oily phase. Melt your oils. Melt your oily or fatty ingredients, but take care not overheat them. Fatty ingredients are very sensitive for overheating. They may be deteriorated to boost. Now, how to or avoid overheating uh, fatty substances. Use a water bath and melt substances with high melting points at first, then add other substances with low melting point. 
these precautions serve to avoid deterioration of the fat by overheating. عشان كده الكريمز in the labs we prepared creams on water bath. In your modern uh, fatty ingredients, dissolve oil soluble solids and add oil miscible liquids and warm. Keep the temperature at 70 degrees centigrade. Now I have the aqueous phase and the oil phase. And, the uh, and finally, antioxidants. As we said, antioxidants are used in the oil phase or their ex exert their action in oil phase because oxidation of oils result in rancidity يعني الاويل لو حصل له اكسيديشن تلاقيه يزنخ الكيميكال ستراكشر بتاعه يتغير ويبقى اوف باد اودر سو انتي اوكسيدنتس ار ديزاين تو جيف ذير اكشن ان ذا اويل فيز افشنت انتي اوكسيدنت is compatible with other ingredients of course and what about its oil and water partition coefficient do you think I should choose an antioxidant with high oil and water partition coefficient of low oil and water partition coefficient again the antioxidant should have your cream base there are some precautions in preparing creams Strong string is essential for emulsification, as we said before. Slow and homogeneous cooling to avoid formation of cold spots. If you suddenly cool the cream, cold spots will be formed. What are cold spots? Cold spots are some of the fatty substances not incorporated in the emulsion. They congeal before being incorporated in the emulsion. These are cold spots. Cold spots are, pre are found or are formed when your cooling is not slow and not homogeneous. If your string is not homogeneous, you stir, sometimes stir and sometimes leave it apart without stirring, this may cause the formation of cold spot. If you didn't stir homogeneously, some of the preparation will be found on the walls of the dish and they will cool fast, forming cold spots. The fats will congeal in them before being incorporated in the emulsion. So slow and homogeneous cooling is very important. Volatile ingredients are added to the final cream after cooling to avoid its loss. And a very important precaution is the temperature. Why we should um, warm our two phases to 70 degrees, degrees. We warm the oil phase to 70 degrees to keep it melt if we put water on solid fats not melted fats if we put water on solid fat with emulsifier the emulsion, the emulsion will never be formed you will never get an emulsion to get an emulsion the fatty phase should be melted then Water is added in presence in, of emulsifier, so emulsion is formed. So we warm the oil phase to melt it, to enhance, to make it easy that emulsion is formed. Now, what we, why we warm the aqueous phase? طب أنا بسخن الأويل عشان يبقى مل ويدخل في الإمالش. طب بسخن الأكويس فيز لي. If you put cold water on warm fatty ingredients, they will congeal fast, forming cold spots. So we have to warm the aqueous phase 
before adding it to the warm oil phase to avoid sudden cooling of the fat, uh, forming cold spots, the fat congeal before it is incorporated in the emulsion. Precautions of preparing of creams. Now we prepared the cream base. How can we incorporate a drug in this cream base? It's according to the nature of the drug. The drug may be a liquid or a solid. If it is a liquid drug, it may be thermolabile or thermostable. If it is solid, it may be soluble or insoluble. Insoluble drugs may be in the form of fine powders or coarse powders. So according to the nature of the drug to be incorporated in the cream, I can choose suitable method to incorporate the drug in the cream base. First, for thermolabile liquids, as we said before, thermolabile liquids are added after the cooling of the cream. You have the cooled cream base, take some of it, add the thermolabile liquid, mix well, and then mix with the rest of the base, the medicated cream. Type. This is what about if I need to incorporate a thermolabile liquid? What if I need to incorporate a thermostable liquid? Thermostable liquids can be incorporated in creams using the same method used for thermolabile ones. Take part of the cream base, add the liquid, mix well, then mix with the rest of the base to get the medicated cream. They may be added during the preparation of the cream base, either to the aqueous phase if they are water miscible, or to the oil phase if they are uh, oil miscible during the preparation of the base. During the preparation, all prepare water, add water soluble solids and water soluble liquids. If they are water soluble, add them to the aqueous phase. And if they are oil soluble, add them to the oil phase during the preparation of the base of the cream. If you want to incorporate a solid drug, if this solid drug is soluble, so you can either take part of the molten cream and uh, dissolve the uh, solid drug in it, levigate the solid drug in it, or levigate it with the medicated, with the cream base, with all the cream base, it will be distributed homogeneously in the cream base, giving you medicated cream. Or you may add the soluble drug during preparation of the cream, either to aqueous phase or to the oil phase according to its solubility. If your drug is insoluble, look at its particle size. If it is fine insoluble drug, so melt the cream base and levigate the fine insoluble drug with it to give the medicated cream. Levigate, it means to mix, just mix because it is fine drug. If you have coarse insoluble drug, you prepare the cream base, then what to do next? Mm -hmm. It's coarse, so I have to triturate it, to wet grind it. Can I wet grind it with all of the base? No, it will not be distributed homogeneously, so to it part of the cream base, Levigate the drug with it, then mix uh, with the other of the base, the rest of the base, to get the medicated cream. Finally, what to do if you have to incorporate an eutectic mixture of solids in your cream? What is eutectic solids? Eutectic solids, some solids 
are in the solid state at room temperature when I when they are apart when they are not mixed. But if you mix these solids together, they form a liquid. Yes, they form a liquid by themselves. You didn't add any liquid. You didn't even heat them. At room temperature, when they are mixed, they form a liquid. And these are called eutectic solids. If you have two eutectic solids, which are generally of phenolic groups, it's a structure of phenolic groups. So how to incorporate it, them into the cream? If you want to incorporate a solid drug, if this solid drug is soluble, so you can either take part of the molten cream and... So at the end of our lecture, you are supposed to be able to differentiate between different classes of emulsifiers, realize general precautions for the preparation of semi-solids, predict a suitable method for the preparation of a cream, and predict a suitable method for incorporation of different kinds of drugs in a cream. By now, we have finished creams. See you next lecture, inshallah. Thank you.